Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about DNA hybridization and what that actual process involves, but also why it's an important process, what you can learn from it. And the reason why DNA hybridization is done is to really assess how genetically similar two different organisms are. Now, it was actually Charles Darwin that put together this tree of life. We're just going to draw it's the mini tree here because it's relevant to why this process is done. So we've got a very simple drawing of a tree here with lots of branches coming off. And Darwin puts together this tree of life, or what's called the phylogenic tree. And he said that all organisms around sort of evolve from a common ancestor. So the common ancestor would be at the bottom of the tree and all the branches as you move further up would be all the different organisms that you find. And with DNA hybridization, we can see how genetically similar two things are, which might provide evidence for there being some kind of common ancestry between them. So let's get into what the process actually involves. So for this, we're going to use these three pictures at the bottom here. So let's say, for example, we have DNA from the human, from the monkey, from the rat, and we want to look at how genetically similar they are, or how, how closely related the monkey and the rat are to the human, for example. So what we need to do is put in place our strands of DNA. So I'm just going to draw our DNA strands. A very quick sketch. So we've got the sugar phosphate strands here forming the double helix, and we've got the bases the A, T, C and G, adenine, thymine, cytosine and guanine bases between those two strands. So we'll just draw in red the DNA from the monkey and just for a visual we'll draw in, in blue the DNA of the rat. So the first thing that you need to do is heat the DNA sample. So you take a sample of DNA from all of the species, and you heat them up. So you, you heat all of that DNA sample up. Now clearly it's not done in just one big test tube, but just for visual purposes, imagine we had one big test tube with all our samples of DNA from all the three organisms, and we heat them. What you find is actually all the strands break apart. So when we heat them, all the strands break apart and we get sort of half strands forming in the tube. So I'm just going to draw a very quick sketch. Hopefully you can see where I'm going with this one. So essentially we have all our hydrogen bonds between the bases broken and we just have a whole a tub full almost of all these broken up strands. That's the first thing you do. The second thing you do is allow all of the DNA samples to cool. So upon cooling, all of those DNA strands reform. So for this, I'm going to just shrink this down a little bit, move this up, so a bit more room. Now, if all those strands reform, you'll see that some of the human DNA will just simply reform. The black strands will just rejoin, some of the red strands will rejoin, some of the blue will rejoin. But on occasions, you may very well get a human strand of DNA joining to a strand of DNA from the monkey. Now, you get what's called complementary base pairing. So where there's an A, there's a T, C joins with G. Now, an at various points, you will find that the base sequences, or the order of those letters, match on the human and the monkey strand. So I'll just draw this and then I'll explain what I've drawn. So, here... Where there's an A on the human DNA, there would be a T on the monkey DNA. And a C in G, for example. So, if the base sequences match, you will get complementary base pairing and hydrogen bonds will form. 
But there are occasions, and I mean at this point here, where some of the letters don't match and the bases don't base pair, so no hydrogen bonds form. So you have this strand of DNA, this double strand of DNA, where some of the bases have joined and some haven't. Now this strand of DNA, because it's made of a cross of two different organisms, it's called cross DNA, or hybrid DNA. And that's where the process gets its name from, DNA hybridisation. We're making these hybrid strands. Equally, we'll just draw in what would happen if the rat DNA happened to join. So what I've drawn here are a few bits of the rat DNA that have base paired. And the ones that I've just drawn outwards are just diagrammatically to show that base pairs haven't been made. So you could, in the sample, upon cooling, see this, and you could see this. But you would also see these three. So when you let all those separated strands cool, some will just reform the human DNA, some monk DNA, some rat DNA, but you will get hybrid strands being formed. And the third and final step, so again, we'll just show this even more, the third and final step in this whole process is reheating. And all you have to do is look at the temperature. Now the theory is, the higher the temperature, the stronger the bases, or the, or the more bases that you have complementary to one another on the two strands, and so the more hydrogen bonding you have. So the higher the temperature needed to break them. So if we, for example, had normal strand of human DNA, so here, and let's for the sake of argument say that we needed a temperature of 36 degrees C to break it up. When we heat this strand here, this hybrid strand of the human and monkey DNA, let's say for the sake of argument that needs a temperature of 28 degrees C to break it up and this human rat hybrid requires a temperature of 21 degrees C to break it up then what that shows is that we're needing to apply more heat to the human monkey DNA than we are to the human rat DNA so in the monkey and human DNA in this red and black strand more complementary bases have been formed, more hydrogen bonds, so we would need more heat to break those strands apart. So we can say that the monkey is genetically more similar to the human than the rat is, just by looking at the temperature. And that's how this whole process works. So that is, in a nutshell, DNA hybridization. So as a recap, you heat up all your DNA samples, you allow them to cool and you'll form hybrid cross strands. Then you reheat those hybrid cross strands and know the temperature required to break them up again. The higher the temperature needed, the more likely it is that you have similar base sequences between the two different organism strands because more hydrogen bonds will have formed. Okay, hope that helps.